everybody video here for you today now recently i talked about very ancient canada i also talked recently about the great lakes copper mystery and how that has been redated back about 9500 years well today let's talk about a place in canada but it's an island in lake huron let's go down to manitoulin island today and this is a very very ancient site and it's right down here I've had at least three or four requests for this video. This is called the Shegawanda Historical Site, and it's right down here. And this was discovered in about 1950. We're going to read about that, but there's some controversy behind this site. But it's on top of a quartzite outcropping right down here. And I believe the archaeological finds were made right in this area, somewhere down here. Now, I think I first read about this site about two years ago, and then over the last few years, I've had about four or five messages on the site. I believe a few from people who live in the general area on Manitoulin Island. Let's just read about it here. It says the Shegawanda National Historic Site, twice the age of the pyramids of Egypt. And of course, that is based on an assumption when you think the pyramids were built. But it says when Thomas E. Lee, an archaeologist with the National Museum of Canada, found ancient stone implements in an island farm field in 1951, they led him and his team to a nearby ridge at Quartzite part of a pre-cambrian geological formation over two billion years old that was poking out of the top of the younger rocks at the top of the hill in shagawanda a picturesque hamlet on highway six south of little current lee uncovered a stunning archaeological find a large prehistoric quarry filled with innumerable stone tools spearheads and scrapers that lee claimed proved the existence of the oldest recorded humans in the americas some twenty-five thousand years ago his findings developed before the use of carbon dating contradicted the standard view that humans came to North America after the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago, and were not substantiated, fueling a decades-long controversy that is still debated today. Now, in some of these articles talking about this time period, the time that humans came to North America and the extinction of the megafauna, it's all kind of rounded down to about 10,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago, but I think we should be a little more precise if we're going to figure out exactly what happened just going on reading it says in 1954 shagawanda was designated a national historic site of canada for over 40 years after lee's initial digs the site lay dormant the land privately owned it says the heritage value of the remains found in shagawanda reads the canadian register of historical places resides in a series of successive cultural occupations of early inhabitants in what is now Ontario beginning circa 11,000 BC with the Paleo-Indian period during the recession of Glacial Lake Algonquin. It says the site also contains artifacts from the Archaic period from about 1,000 to 500 BC as well as Point Peninsula culture stone tools associated with the Middle Woodland period. And that's from about 2,000 to about 1,500 years ago. But here's a look at some of the digs here at this site. And here is a look at some of the stone tools that came from about 3,000 to 2,500 years ago. Just going over a little more of the history, that's Thomas E. Lee there on the right. It says in 1951 he excavated intensively there with large crews for the next four years. Through 1955 they made exciting finds that put Shagawanda on the map for having the oldest traces of a man in Ontario. Paleo Indian spear points about 10,000 years old. Even these soon paled in significance. However, when geologists told Lee that artifacts under the spear points were in Ice Age deposits, this exploded the established idea that spear-throwing Clovis Indians were the first humans ever to enter the Americas after the Ice Age. Lee was vigorous in making his case, but the established authorities did not want to hear it. More than four decades later would pass before the American Clovis barrier could be broken. Now there is a general agreement that most of the dozens of spear points found were made in the Paleo-Indian period around 10, 12,000 years ago, but it says there is no agreement on who made the masses of other stone tools and debris that covered the Paleo-Indian spear points or the quite different artifacts buried underneath them. Lee likened the latter to old world Paleolithic cultures of more than 30,000 or more years ago. The geological context of the artifacts provides a second complex of evidence. Geological events as the Ice Age, high water levels in the Great Lakes, 
in weathering of rock over immense spans of times leaves traces that can be fitted into broader chronologies. If the artifacts are associated with those events, then something is known about their ages too. To understand the geological deposits where they were digging, both Lee and Julig worked with specialists. The geologist that Thomas Lee worked with told him that the older tools he was finding were in sediments directly deposited by continental glaciers. That would mean that the Paleo Indians were latecomers because people have lived on this hilltop site before the last major advance of the Ice Age. Now here's where the controversy comes in. Stork and Julig did their studies after Thomas Lee and his crew did their work. It says, geological opinions presented to Stork and Julig instead portray these same deposits as beach-related, stemming from a high water lake stand that occurred at the end of the Ice Age about 10,500 years ago. The interpretation of almost every line of evidence is radically different depending on whether the successive sediment layers are seen as intact or disturbed. For Lee, the stratification of soil is real and represents a meaningful timeline. Stork and Julig dispute this and contend the artifacts were introduced into different layers by soil mixing. Now, when Thomas E. Lee came out with his findings in the 1950s, of course, that created ripples in the archaeological world, a lot of controversy. People probably laughed at it. Dating that went back maybe 20, 30,000 years ago, a site in the Americas, especially back then. But should it have been? Was his work solid? Well, that's a big question. When Stork and Julie came out with their findings that this site might only be 9,500 years old, like that wasn't cool enough, the interest in this site kind of died. But just think about that, 9,500 years old. That's the exact dating that the old copper complex dating was revised to 9,500 years old. Stork and Julie's finding says a lot of these findings come from that exact time period. Well, I find that interesting. Now here's an excellent PDF I found. I will leave this link below. It was written eight years ago by Robert E. Lee. And no, not that Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee is Thomas Lee's son, the one who did the initial work at the site. It says projectile points and refitted artifacts at the Shagawanda site, their position and meaning. Now, I was pretty impressed with Thomas E. Lee's work here in the 1950s. He was here for almost four years, did sketches of all the projectile points he found, documented the location, grid coordinates, depth, context, cultural affiliation. But this is just very well done. Here are some of the artifacts found at the site. He did sketches of all the projectile points. A lot of ancient history isn't the most awesome awe-inspiring sites they're just simple history documenting these places get the chronology right figure out what the heck happened but here's a look at some of the projectile points that he did sketches of and i will leave this link below now here's a chart where these artifacts were found different sediment layers just real good archaeology work but the big question here were some of these lower layer artifacts mixed by a process called soil mixing or is this in a glacial till? One set of geologists said this was an ancient beach. One set said this is a glacial till. So it was interpreted two different ways by two different teams of geologists. Here's another chart from the archaeological work done here about 70 years ago. These squares are about 3 meters long on each side or about 10 feet to each side of the square. But here is documentation where some of these artifacts were found in the early 1950s. I just thought this was a very well-written PDF, had a lot of good information, a lot of good charts, the different sediment layers where the artifacts were found. Archaeological reports sometimes aren't the most exciting <laughs> visually things to show, but a lot of good information, has a lot of good information. And the conclusion here, it just has an, uh, kind of an opinion here, outside opinion, why it should be agreed upon that Lee's conclusions in the early 1950s that the artifacts below the Paleo Indian layer came from a time period way, way earlier than 12,000 years ago should be accepted. And I will leave this link below. Now, I just haven't found much written on this in the last few years. I did find this article from 2016, the neglected archeological mystery on the world's largest lake island. Lake Huron's Manitoulin Island is the largest lake island in the world. It's so large, in fact, that it has 100 lakes of its own. 
and some of those lakes have islands of their own. Here's a look at some drawings from the article from Thomas Lee in the early 1950s, some projectile points. Just not a lot of pics to show in this video, not a lot of work has been done here. But it says, to put Lee's view in brief, early peoples lived and left their stone tools on the Shaganwanda hilltop in a warm period. Before the last major glacial advance, the returning glaciers caught up and moved these tools only a few yards or tens of yards. The tools stayed locked up under the ice for tens of thousands of years until it melted away. Then a succession of Paleo-Indian and Archaic groups migrated along the north shore of a sub-Arctic Great Lake. Each stopped briefly at Shagawanda, leaving a scattering of spear points and other stone tools on top of the glacial till deposits. About 5,000 years ago, the lake basin filled again, temporarily turning the hill into an island in Great Lakes Nipissing. A tremendous stone quarry industry sprang up, covering parts of the site at least five feet deep in broken rock, yet it wasn't the rock they wanted except, as on the spot, tools to be used in splitting and shaping of wood for trade. So Thomas Lee came to the conclusion that the artifacts found below the Paleo-Indian layer came from maybe 20, 30,000 years ago. It says Stork and Julie, by contrast, envisioned Paleo-Indians as the first humans and principal inhabitants of the site, arriving about 10,000 years ago after the Ice Age was over. Natural mixing introduced these archaic people's artifacts into beach sediments, which Lima has mistaken for glacial deposits. Great Lakes Nipissing does not figure significantly in their chronology of cultures, and the majority of larger artifacts are seen not as woodworking tools, but as unfinished stages in the production of small stone tools to be carried far away and wide. So two different sets of geologists here at two different time periods came to two different conclusions about this site. I will leave a few articles below where they go over this controversy. Wave rolled biface versus freshly cut biface surfaces. Typical sandy beach, cobble beaches. They go over a lot of evidence here on both sides. So you can read this, leave your own thoughts below. That is a video on the Shagawanda archaeological site here, Ontario. Manitoulin Island and Lake Huron. I just thought that was a pretty interesting video by request. More than a few messages to me on that site. But people living here for 10,000 years or maybe 10 or 20 or 30, who knows? Hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very nice day.